Hey guys, it's Parker here. Back with part two of Pyre. So, let's let us commence the right. I mean, I think it's been like a few days since I last played um Pyre, but I'm pretty sure I got the hang of the controls. So let's just see what happens while playing. As you complete preparations for the rites to commence, you notice May approaching. You notice too that she is wearing a companion's raven. We can go home? May, I thought I made myself quite clear that you were not to touch those robes. Oh, I'm sorry Mr. Chodari, I just thought that maybe you were being funny at the time. Unbelievable. Hey, uh, something's happening in the sky. I think we're up. Reader, what brings you to the spring of Jomia? Why, it must have been the stars. Although it seems that your triumvirate now numbers four exiles, not the expected three. The rules of the rites were not created for you to besmatch. Prepare now to confront the fate. They still honor the traditions of the scribes and surely have been longing for this chance. But first, you have a choice to make. The skies burn bright once more as their next adversaries in the right's approach. Their apparent leader is a bent old cur who regards you with a form of battle. At his side is an intense young man. I hail you, exiles of the Nightwings, and I'm grateful that you chose to grace us with your presence once again. I am called Dalbert Eldhart. He is an honorable cur on upholding the sacred traditions of the rights of the sun, and this is my son Almir. Almir, he is a dutiful foster son of Dalbert Oldar and is very protective of him above all else. Not tandem, father. We need not greet them, father. We shall face you in the field this night, and may the victor's pyre burn eternal. But first, we offer you a token of good faith. And show of appreciation that the Nightwings have returned. Dalbert approaches you with something in his paw. You sense his motives are sincere as he hands you a small talisman. Thank him and begin. That that curl was very kind and son. He was so caring, wasn't he? Sheila. Well, when can we start? I want to help you beat them! We need three of us exactly to conduct the right, but we got four now besides the reader. This ought to be his call. If someone has to stand aside this time, I volunteer. No volunteering, chum! It ought to be the reader's call, remember? Very well then, reader. Who shall it be? Henceforth, you shall choose three exiles to conduct each right, prepared to make your choice. The right uh... shall begin. Forthwith. I don't know, I like Rookie because he's fast and he could jump very well. Um Okay, how about we give May the talisman? Cause she's still gonna join anyway. And then Hedwin I mean he's just pretty average. And then Jodario, she's very slow, but I could maybe make her sprint, so I don't think it's a problem. And whenever she jumps, like, she could, like, bounce off the other players, so... Yeah, I think I'll choose Hedwin to, um, step out. Wait, what? Oh, I meant Hedwin to, to step out. Oh, well. You didn't have to do this, so I'll do my best. No! I meant... No! I picked the wrong. Okay, fine. It's fine. I'll I'll just pick Jodari on me instead. As you will. 
Oh, I'm sorry, rookie. I meant to <laughs> have Panda step out. May. Oh well. <laughs> the analysis is voice. May. Oh me. Thank you. Thank you for believing me because I think this guy's do too. The choice is cast. Well, look at you, chum, making a tough call. Fine, whatever, I'll sit out. I'm sorry, I meant to pick Edwin. Nightwings, I trust you all are well prepared. For these old eyes, you'll see that their eyes shall be commencing momentarily. Are you quite ready too, my son? I hope so, Father. Here, now, let me show you. Alright, let's do our best. Now begin! <laughs> Already does your adversary's flame begin to flicker. Oh. Whoa, May jumped pretty nicely. Look forth, my son, the waters of Jomir many main. Six of the ace rise known as the brave or bring blessings unto us to see. Perhaps our chances come at last. No we need more than blessings to prevail against the father. Please keep fighting. <laughs> Collect moon drops? Uh, sure. A boon come from the stars themselves. <laughs> but shall it be enough for Dalbert and his faithful son? <laughs> Resplendent! Oh. They simply threw it in! <laughs> it sure did. Engulf within the oil. <laughs> Words us to great glory. Once more like that, and we are finished here. Now then. Glory to the scribe. Okay, I, for I keep forgetting the freaking attack. <laughs> It is done. The night wings prevail. The that was a glorious performance, I must say. Perhaps okay, I gotta remember how so to attack next time. Next time, Mazambu Simda. We did it. Indeed. Sumitanashi. I wonder what happened to the fate. They seemed so nice, didn't they? An honorable triumvirate, determined to uphold the traditions of the right. Exiles of the Nightwings, the dawn is yours, and may you earn your freedom. But, but father, the dawn might have been ours. We failed, and I failed you. Nonsense. We are the fate. We do what is ordained, and nothing else. Now, let us go, my son, for I am weary once again. There is much to learn from this experience. Witness the rites firsthand and be inspired. Until the next rite. Um, hello, excuse me. I mean, would you excuse me for a moment, do you think? You, you're one of them. What do you want? Father needs me. Oh, I'm sorry. I think that I forgot what I was going to say. I'm so embarrassed. I... What is the matter with you? It is against the rights for us to even speak like this. Um, I did not know that. I don't think no one said anything like that to me. But then all of this is very new to me. And so I thought maybe... You cannot be serious. Yes, I mean, I like to laugh. I like to laugh a lot. And you, how about you? This is Nightwing's trick. Father told me not to speak to it, any of you. 
But I, I just Ugh. I have to go. Vistalia. Wait, Albert. I think I. Wait, I think that was your name. Was that even your name? Uh. Wait. Oh no, May. <laughs> oh no. I see you turn to the wagon after overcoming the fate. You notice just Dario tense up and frown. Where did who? Wait, the sleeping guy? The minstrel is gone. You see, it is true. There is no trace of the little minstrel who had been lying still in the corner of the wagon all this time. He joined others and searched for him outside. Your fellow exiles have revealed nothing to you of the lone mistral, or how they found him, though you sense their concern as they scoured the vicinity for him. We are worried about the mistral, my friend. You worry about the stars. Wherever they guide us, we are going. You gaze upon the stars once more. How the midnight star. Nice star burst bright over the standing stones at the edge of flagging hands. Um, okay. Simdare. Everyone, we're headed back east, all the way across the valley. Towards the current of Hua Haubden. According to the stars, the next fight should soon commence here. Krekare. That's right, we have to risk it. What if that Minster guy doesn't turn up by then? We shall find him, on this night or another. They continue searching for some time, however, the Minster is nowhere to be found. After having toured the fate in a rather one-sided contest last night, you find Rookie off on his own. He sense he wants to talk about your decision to exclude him for conducting the right. <laughs> I'm sorry dude, I tried to have Hedwin popped out. Well, look at what we have here, but this is my good chum. Oh yeah, I'm mad. You bet I'm mad. Who would it be if they don't get to run around in the cold wearing old robes? Good thing I just managed to scrap I without my help. He complains like this for some time and then... Okay, it's all my sister now. I want for a quick walk, know what I mean? He departs to check on things outside. He says that he no longer has misgivings about what transpired, as well as if they are present about the missing menstrual. There is still no sign of the lone minstrel, although Jodaro tracks potential signs of movement east, the same way you are headed, you consider where to search for him. Alright, let's go to Fall Flat. I... we haven't been to, um, Fall Flat. Hedwin thinks that the missing minstrel could have taken a route opposite to the one he took. Jodara believes the missing minstrel must have taken the same route he took earlier. I don't know. I mean, I think his objective was to run away from us, so I don't think he would take the same route. So let's go to Fall Flat. He'll take the opposite route. I don't know. As you travel through the dusty waste of Fall Flat, Hedwin seems more... Hedwin, he wanted to downside in such a way to regain his freedom and return to his home. Hedwin seems more ill at ease than usual. There's no sign of the missing minstrel. Sorry about this, Jody. I had a hunch you must have come this way. With that, our hunches could be more dependable, but do not fear. We shall find him yet. Sounds like a hunch to me. More of a promise. You pick up bits and pieces of the minstrel's significance to your fellow exiles. He was there when they first discovered the black wagon, but they refused to say much more for now. Dang, he wasn't here. Stop the wagon. What? How, how come? Because of her. They're coming! They're coming for us! 
We have to be ready. We have to. Does she mean what I think she means? I believe so. Your father saw a scramble to prepare the wagon for whatever it is out there. Once you help us settle in, perhaps you can learn more just towards the concern. <laughs> they are coming for us. They fear disguise. They fear disguise. I know they do. What's she talking about? What's going on? Howlers. Lots of them. Then, what are we gonna do? They fear disguise. Calm yourself, May. We shall give them reason to fear us as well. We will use the rhymes and the books. Indeed, one of us can draw them out under the reader's watch. It shall be just like one of our rights. Edwin turns to you. It seems we need your help in this, my friend. We just need a volunteer to go with you. I'll do it, mister! Please, you have to let me and the sky so protect me, I know they will. Jodario exchanges looks with Hedwin. Each of them nods at you as this is in their approval. May tends to help vent out the howlers. Prepare for them. The howling sound. I mean, it means they're here. Oh, by the sky, they're here. Um. Fend off the howlers. I'll do my best. There's many more? Oh, here they come, here they come! Oh boy. <laughs> God oh, damn it, no! It is. I think it is. Oh, this poor wretched beast. Huh? Just then, May spots something creeping towards her. <gasps> Who? What? <gasps> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just thought of that. The howling so size as your fellow soft scrub brought to check on May. You find her one piece, along with an unfamiliar, unfamiliar little face. Is he the best? Can we keep him? <laughs> you sense the depth of experience in this creature, at least judging by dry them standards. In fact, you feel a connection to him. If you concentrate, perhaps you could derive some meaning from his calls and screeches. <laughs> uh The dry them seems both excited and frustrated by something. Interact to try to understand him. He sets a pattern in the drive-in's ridges. He seems welcoming of this. The drive-in seems to have history of Black Wagon. You're beginning to understand him. <laughs> oh wow. The drive-in recognizes you as the new reader of the Nightwings. He is pleased to meet you. You can now understand the use of this unusual drive-up. Hurrah. The drive-in seems satisfied how 
And having gone it through to you, and you explained your companions to Lily, you've learned of him so far. No one argues against letting the creature come along. Inside the wagon, the other drive-in stared at him with something like reverence. The drive-in joined you! Seems to know his way around. You can see the little lamp has made itself at home. He rushes right up to you. Uh... Your new M companion seems very pleased to be in the wagon. He indicates he was able to find you thanks to the swarm of hollers. He has no love of hollers, and they know not to mess with him either. He plans to set up a nest that should ward off any further trouble from him. He looks forward to the road ahead of everyone and believes it shall be worth it. He seems to be saying he's happy to be back where he belongs and he urges you to keep going. He bows out towards his brother and settling the wagon's after. An arid southern path toward the ominous cairn of hope. Your new and friends need assistance that you take this path very easy. Edwin orders the wagon to halt somewhere in the desolate sprawl of Jameer Valley. There's someone on the road. Be careful, everyone. The figure watching the black wagon from far approaches arms spread wide, although a hat and cloak concealed the figure's features. <coughs> then, the imp rushes out toward whoever it is. <coughs> Here I am! The imp is very riled up at the sight of whoever is approaching, though in an almost joyous way. Tis so, though, it is good to see you, and you found others even faster than expected. He is a vulnerable driver who sees to know the ins and outs of the Nightwing's black wagon. The imp called Tizzo appears very pleased, the long mister turns toward the rest of you. Hello, we have not met, but I know who we are, or who you must be. I returned as promptly as I could. Have you walked the disguised themselves? Because I think maybe you have? Hello indeed, you had us worried there when you took off. I should knock him back into the summer. I did not aim to cause you such concern. As soon as I awaken, I had to notify my client that the Nightwings have returned. Your client? A, my client, Saddlewood. He is your point of contact, as I understand. He did not find his wagon by mistake. So, what now? You continue down the path. That is why I'm here. When we meet my client, he shall explain. For now, you have a job to do. I assure you that I shall not interfere. But, I mean to accompany you. Would that be alright? Hedwin and the others exchange looks. Welcome back, Mr. Got a name? I am sometimes called Tariq. He appears to be a charming musician, yet seems to be connected to the rights. It is a pleasure to meet you, Nightwings. The lone Mr. returns to the Black Wagon with your fellow exiles. The lone Mr. rejoined the group. The Karen of Hope is a foreboding sight. It is here that the next rite is soon to commence. Ligaratus. Reader, if you have a moment, once we are settled on these grounds, I wish to speak with you in the wagon at your leisure. The low minstrel on his white lute chronicled the journey of the Nightwings through song. Using it, you may hear a glimpse of your past experiences across the downside. Um... 
this one. The lone minstrel sees us situated and stop in the wagon. He is very still, not unlike, not unlike when he was sleeping. Reader, I shall keep this brief, as you surely have a right you must conduct. You have read something of the Book of Rights. Which means that you may know something of my nature. On the contrary, you know not what it means, and he soon senses this. Forgive me, for I spoke too soon. Suffice. It I have served the night wings for some time. Conduct the rites of glory, and shall achieve what you seek. The low minister nods farewell to you and steps away. I knew it was the fool's errand, but my liege, he will not listen. He instead insisted to pursue a certain treasure, a celestial orb, freshly fallen from the heavens to the reaches of the downside. He would be a living legend, if only you could grasp it. Whispered in his ear that Kaimur Rope Collar, his other most trusted aide, would I slew that man myself. He was a simple and yet brilliant ruse. His was a simple and yet brilliant ruse to draw the Emperor farther still from his responsibilities and towards his greed. Thus did the Emperor begin an expedition into forsaken lands. He insisted that he go himself. Oh, hey Oh, hey guys, that's the only day this side of sand, so what can I do for you for? What can I- I- I, I don't know. <laughs> I just skipped it. Uh, Ron, how'd you make it all this way ahead of us? Uh, come now, Mr. Greentail, can't just give up on my business secrets, am I right? Am I right? What I can do, though, seeing as you've been such a good customer and all, is provide you a sample of something, a little something, something you might like. Here, check this out. Seeing as you brought the moon crest thing here for me last time, why? I was just thinking you'd use this, and I got more if you want. You receive Pinch of Stardust. It does seem useful. Interact with Ron to quiet him down. Oh my god. <laughs> well, I guess. Well, I guess maybe I should pack it up for today. You and your fellow exiles gather around the sacred site known as the Cairn of Ha'ub, anticipating the hour that the rites are to commence again. All is quiet for a time, and then... From out of nowhere, it charges in a gangly cur. He stops short and gives you a mighty sneer. That's Barker Ashpaws! He uses the troublemaking cur, drills in the defeated triumvirate to stand against him. Real piece of work, just don't make eye contact. Hi, well, would you look at this lot? I even got one of our own, consorting with the two leggers. You're a disgrace there, mate, you realize? Ah, uh, good to see you, Barker. You're looking well. Didn't know you knew about the rides. Hi, I know about a lot of things, my friend. For instance, I know you're gonna be the fairy. Very sad that you went to floor with you here. Didn't know his back, you scratch your ears with a spot at high and mighty night wings there, but I'm gonna make sure all of you get it. Because, why not? Sounds good, this sounds good. The current Barker laughs away as his pack stumbles out the room. You hear them howling and cackling as the star above them above begin to glow. To the splendors of the accursed cairn of Ha'oub. You shall find the downside grows less pleasant from this point. But first, there's a tradition to uphold. This time you stand against the dissidents. Even now they hunger to defeat you. Perhaps not simply to regain their freedom, but to deny you yours. A 
as the stars shine down upon you, the pack of cars is standing against the sign continue hooting and howling. Right, come on you lot, spoil some blood! Then Rookie pulls you aside. Um, look chum, I don't know how to say this, but I can't go against the guys. Just trust me on this one, okay? You sense he needs it. You make a mental note to ask about his history Barker whenever time permits. It's alright, Rookie. We can take care of him. Begging your pardon, but if you need another to stand on your side this night, I have someone here whom I will recommend. Do not be coy with us, minstrel. Don the rose if you attempt to stand with us. Oh, I did not mean myself. The rights are not for me. I was still referring to this little one. A creature wearing tiny rhymes appears at the lone minstrel's side. Three hee hee! Tiso seems to be volunteering to take on your adversaries, the descendants. Absurd, the imp knows the rights. He knows a great deal. So long as the night we stand together, he shall be at your side. Although, you need not take my word for it. Tiso, our adversary seems to be preoccupied. Perhaps we may quickly show our comrades what you can do. The little imp peers at you. He sends his connection to the rights as he awaits your guidance. Wow, okay. Um. Teasel seems excited to see some of his favorite tricks. Reader, influencing Teasel may take some getting used to. He is inviting you to try. Um, flutter. Wow, he can fly! <laughs> No, it Good. cannot be. Then we shall see what comes of this new partnership of yours. Hold. Oh, to implode. Whoa. Piso soon returns after imploding. Okay. Interesting. He does have a lot of abilities. Well done as ever, Tiso. Tiso is happy to lend his support during the rites if he can use his help. Well then, reader, who shall conduct the rites in the name of the Nightwing? Who shall conduct the rites? Tiso! Nay! Jodariel! Go. May the scars watch over us, or even help us out if we need it. Rise up, you soul! Come on, boys! Get him! Let's do our best. Commence! <laughs> Dang it. Now to the flame! The orb is loose! The night wings make their mark upon the flame. Joe Dariel doused the adversary's flames. It was almost cool. Yes. Alright, you lot, but does it! No more fussing around, right? My boys and me, we're proper angry now. Angry now. Careful now! 
Your adversary Barger there seems rather fired up. Whatever shall you do? Whatever shall we do? Oh dang it. Oh no. <laughs> Unfortunate. He's gonna keep attacking. And it is done. The Nightwings prevail yet again. Look the scribes themselves. Oh, okay, that was kind of scary, <laughs> but we did it. The right is done. He's so excited to have failed in his first right with your group. Oh wow! I thought, did we just win? Did we just beat them? Well, well, well. The heaping pile of all dumb. I just can't believe you shot us, showed us the weapon like that. My boys and I, we have to take it just a tad more serious next time. Till then, you just be sure to tell old rookie Grintail that yours truly. He remembers everything, you hear? The rights do tend to teach something of trust. Something's awakened in the moon-touched girl. The scribes, they whisper to me. They do from time to time. A devious trick from the rope collar. Enlightenment seldom avails itself to simple imps. Tiso feels solemn respect for the rights and all their Maria complexities. Is the influence of the imp scribe until the stars align. By the was your guidance of the Nightwings reader. Your followers are fortunate to have found one such as you. May you find freedom that you seek. After torting the dissidents, a triumphant anarchist who can act the rights for sheer thrill. In a solid performance, you return to the wagon to recover from the night's nice ordeal and figure out how best to proceed. You alright, rookie? Sorry, I think so, chum. I just need a little time. Didn't come on Barker being caught up in all this. You don't own him, your conscience. You sort out things with him. You always do. Hmm. I do not wish to interrupt, but the dark of night is waning. Reader, just outside, please. You find Jodario and the lone mister gazing into the sky above the valley, which is beginning to grow pale. You look towards the heavens. Uh, Melis, the bog star. The bog star burns bright over a fetid tavern in flagging hands. Then, it is as I feared, we are depressed further north beneath the valley into flagging hands. A gloom filled, desolate region of the gentle side, beyond which lies the sea. The skies are watching over us, they will protect us wherever we should go. Had you been to flagging hands, you would not say such things. The skies have surely turned their backs on that place. If I may, the bleakness of flagging hands shall wear upon you, to be sure. I urge for you to take what rest you can, for you shall need your strength upon the road ahead. Your fellow exiles agree to turn in for the remainder of the night. At dawn, you shall have to press deeper into the downside. You can tell something's troubling Rookie. Zoe seems relieved to see you. Hey, uh, chum, listen, I gotta level you real quick. You remember Parker, don't you? Not exactly easy to forget. Don't believe you me, I try. Well, he's got me by the scruff. I 
I've been down here a little while, as you can see by now, but Barker, he's been here longer. He's made quite the name down here. As for me, I need help, you understand? I had a certain old standard to uphold. So, I figured he would be the one to ask. Then, Ricky hesitates. But then, his familiar grin returns. So what if I own it though, right, Joe? I got people back on the other side, and just between us, we're loaded. I mean, rich. My little problem with Barker soon is going to take care of itself, just as soon as my people send the money, though. So, I'm telling you right here and now that you even worry about it, and I'm sure everything on the front is going to end up real tight real soon. With that, he's going to press off before he can respond. It seems Ricky owns a depth of some sort. What is on the line exactly? You're not sure. Come on, you find Hedwin and Jodario assisting the current situation with the menstrual. Are you most certain? Hey, madam, I may no so no claim the journey shall be pleasant, but it is necessary. Hedwin motions to you as they continue talking. Seems we have some work to do once we arrive in flagging hands. Let's get going. Soon as they're ready. Sooner we get there, sooner we can leave. Consider how to proceed. The flagging hands region proves as dismal, dismal as Jodara indicated. They are as thick and foul, part to the pit of millions, all the way across the marshlands on the coast. Reader, would you join me in the wagon for a moment? We have matters to discuss. Jodara and Hedwin exchange looks, then she turns to you. Go see what he wants. Thank you for your time, reader. I have something for you on behalf of my client before he is an artifact called the Beyond the Crystal. You observe a shimmering crystal of some sort beside the Book of Rites. As yes, sir, miss. The triumvirates you are to confront during the ride shall stop at nothing to prevail against you. They have prepared for this for quite some time. The Beyond the Crystal may help ensure that you are well prepared in turn. It is the resource now at your disposal to be used at your discretion. Gaze upon it, and you shall see what I mean. It is calling you. You look upon the shimmering surface of the Beyond the Crystal. Some of your senses fail, though you retain a hold over your consciousness. Um, I mean, conscience. An operation appears before you, clad in the rightness of the rights, but incorporeal. I sense that you're not a total idiot. She reaches for the cost on her mask. So, the Nine Wings have returned. Oh, but where are my matters? You must be their lovely reader. Please, call me Sandra. We met briefly before when you first beheld the book, when you were stuck inside of it. I was among the patterns your companions banished there. No doubt struck, stroking their egos. Their egos. You listen well enough to that damn voice. Now, I suggest you listen well to me. I am bound in servitude to you, along with any idiots whose freedoms happen to be entwined with yours. I know the rights better than anyone. I soon can whip you into shape. If you but take advantage of my services. First, I have prescribed Charles to those friends of yours. If they can pass, it shall be worth their while and yours. Secondly, my Beyonders and I affair ourselves for practice rights, should you be so inclined. Or, you can always come and chat and briefly free me from an attorney of boredom, hmm? You have evoked Sandra for the Beyond the Crystal. What do you wish to do?
I do appreciate the effort to make small talk with me, reader. Anything to break for the monotony staring at the void within this place. Not that I could see if I tried. <laughs> she laughs at this, or maybe at herself. Certainly, I can make talk with my fellow Beyonders, chopped here as they are of me. You might expect that we all would keep each other company. There is just one problem there, however. We are all sick of one another. She laughs again, perhaps not her joke, but instead of her utter predicament. I do exaggerate to some extent, but there is a certain truth to this. We have been stuck together long enough that we have grown more distant rather than more close. But I had best not wear out my welcome with the likes of you, as I have long since done with all the others here. So, carry on for now. And if those fools at home in travel learn something, come bring them forth to me. I shall see to it they learn some more. Um, request their scribe child? Indeed, it looks as though one of our failures of us is ready for a lesson in pain. Um, let's pick Ricky. You asked Sandra to administer one of her special trials for Rookie. Oh what, the loud mouse cur? Well, I suppose he is ready, technically. Though I have a litany of reservations about him, but let us bring him forth. Soon Rookie appears and he does his mom. Uh, chum, why are you looking at me like that? Right, what's the big idea, huh? Just some kind of trick you're playing, chum? The Operation Sadger then appears and then fastens her mask. Shut your snout and listen well, Kerr. You answer to me here. Huh? What? what? Your mouth runs crooked in those stuffy little paws. You have much to learn if you have any intent to prevail on the rights. Let us see how you fare without the benefit of a trusted camera. Stay for your lovely reader. Uh, I guess it's you and me then, huh, chum? Wherever you are. That's how we do it, right, chum? It is, and you acknowledge likewise that you do not do it on your own, despite having to face my dear friends all by yourself. You passed my test, Kerr. Congratulations are in order, both to you and to your lovely reader. Now, farewell. That Sandra kind of gives you the shakes, know what I mean, chum? Hey, what's that you got? We see Jomir is paying for completing Rookie's trial. Okay guys, I think that will be it for part 2 of Pyre. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.